Hello and welcome to my video on how I fitted this plastic nose cone to my vintage model company's Spitfire Night Fighter. This video was shot, I think, back in 2018 on uh, a fairly cheap action camera, hence uh, it's not that brilliant in quality. And this was also done before I did actually start to talk through what I was doing in my videos. So I'm going to try and talk you through uh, what I'm doing as I'm doing it and hopefully it'll all make sense in the end. As you can see from this photo there's a depression at the top and the bottom of the nose cone and I used that as a centre line and marked it with a red pen ready to start the cutting out to fit the propeller in place. The first stage is to fit the propeller spinner to the nose block using the prop hook and to do this you're going to need uh, some pliers and a very hefty pair of wire snippers and as you can see you poke the wire through the nose block and then through the prop shaft leave a slight amount of gap at the hook end and then somehow try and work out how to bend a 90 degree angle at the other end that uh, helps to form the clutch. As you'll see in a moment, I end up using my flat nose pliers and basically brute force and ignorance to uh, get this uh, 90 degree bend. And honestly, this is made slightly more difficult by trying to do this in front of the camera. And now I'm just making one last final adjustment to get it to 90 degrees before I will then cut off the excess with my uh, rather heavy duty cutters. I've just remembered that uh, I haven't actually checked that the clutch engages properly so uh, I'm just doing that before I do actually then get round to finally trying to cut the spare bit of wire off. But as you can now see, I've decided it does still need some further adjustments. So uh, we'll carry on with that for a second. Oh, and I've now decided I need to try my long nose pliers to uh, get right to the edge and bend it over slightly more. And then once again, checking the clutch engagement mechanisms working and freeze up. And finally, I get to cut the excess wire off, which I've got to be quite honest with you there, guys, is not an easy feat at all. Hence the size of my cutters, as you can see, really heavy duty. And I think in the end it takes me both hands to get it done. It has done on other occasions anyway. So as you can see, I'm quite struggling there. And here we go. Is it going to go? Oh yeah, there we go. It's gone. And here we have one spinner attached to the nose block. And I think I do a little bit of testing, spinning it one way to make sure it engages. And then the other way to make sure it disengages. Not scientific, but uh, there we go. The next step is to start cutting off the excess on the plastic nose cone. So I just go around with my uh, polycarbonate scissors in this case and just uh, basically hack away at it just to get uh, the basic form. I do try and uh, keep my fingers away from the red line that I uh, drew on it, as I told you about earlier. And then uh, we can start refining the cut. Once I've cut off all the, what I believed at the time was the excess, I then started to check the alignment with my uh, little red line that I drew earlier, just to see if it was going to line up or how best to start the cuts. I'm now ready to make my first incision with, uh, as you can see, my uh, scalpel with a new number 10 blade, which the first incision I think I do straight down. Second incision is uh, to the left or behind the first, 
and at a slight angle which uh, eventually but uh, the plastic does seem to be quite hard to get through here to uh, basically form a triangle. Well, my apologies, but uh, it has been a long time since I did this video, but uh, I've somehow uh, put a slight curve in that cut. Uh, I can't remember doing that, but uh, there we go. And now uh, I'm just trying to test fit to see what's happening. And looking at it, I've got loads more work to do there to get the nose cone to fit over the prop. Now I'm starting on the opposite side, just so that uh, I can hopefully uh, fit it over the propeller better and to see what other adjustments I need to make. Another of many test fittings, if uh, my memory serves me correctly. Trying to see where I need to uh, cut some more out on the back sides by the looks of that. It was at this point that uh, I realised that the cone actually needed to be a bit shorter so I've started to cut out even more off and then because I've now got a gap I'm using my scissors to uh, cut the slots out to hopefully fit the propeller better. From this point, the fitting of the nose cone was a long-winded affair of cutting, test fitting, cutting, etc, etc. So I think I'm going to uh, speed up the rest of the process for you. I hope you don't mind. At this point, I think I decided that the nose cone was still rather large for the size of the propeller and uh, just wouldn't look right. So I'm measuring down, I think, about a centimetre or so on either side and trying to lightly mark it to mark out how far to extend the hole. And at some point later on, I will end up cutting even more of the base of the cone off. Now I'm just cutting off about half a centimetre and I'll go round the whole of the uh, nose cone just snipping it all away and then obviously again more test fitting i'm trying to level the base off now by sanding it with uh, one of my sanding blocks yet again some more test fitting and then some more cutting. At this point the nose cone fitted reasonably well and quite tight so uh, as you can see I could do some spinning just to see how central it was when it was revolving and as per Need some more adjustments. However, this time I felt I needed to uh, take some off the balsa wood spinner. So, as you can see here, I've got my trusty old nail file 
and uh, I'm just starting to gently rub down the balsa wood. I think I put a bit of a chamfer on it so that it fitted better. I'm now at the final stages of fitting with uh, some further fine trimming using my uh, trusty scalpel and uh, once I've finished this we can uh, then get on to uh, gluing it in position. I'm now just trying to get the uh, burrs off or the excess plastic after the cutting out. Just tidying it all up, uh, ready for proper fitting. Then one last test fit and I think I'm ready to glue it in place. To fix the nose cone in place permanently, I'm first going to use some uh, thin cyano and I'm just going to tack it in place. As you can see I'm using uh, a bit of the spare wire from uh, the undercarriage just to carry a few drops onto uh, the join between the balsa wood and uh, the nose cone itself and then once I've done that and I'm happy that that's dried I'll uh, carry on and uh, glue it more permanently with uh, some uh, epoxy resin. I ended up going around the whole circumference of the balsa wood with the cyano to tack the nose cone in place before, as I said, going round and filling in any holes between the propeller and the nose cone with the epoxy filler. Unfortunately, I don't have a video of me using the epoxy to uh, permanently glue the nose cone to the propeller. So, unfortunately, that's the end of this uh video. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching it and uh, look forward to seeing you on the next one. Cheers! Bye!